Hey guys and welcome back to another Magic Box video. In this one we're going to be doing a short tutorial on smoke effects and explosions to hopefully recreate something you see here in this image. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now that we're in the world of Magic Box, so let's go ahead and zoom out, go to the third palette, delete the cube, go to shape and give make it a cylinder, go into the world editor, with the isometric uh, orthogonal for better the camera angles so I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm just duplicating the cone. Uh, not the cone, the uh, cylinder. And in a world, and in the real world, missiles aren't just a continuous cylinder, they eventually come to a point. So for each object, you want to shed the size of the cylinder. So for the second cylinder, go ahead and go into the object mode and you wrote it. And actually, we shouldn't have created these two extra ones here because we're going to duplicate this. And erode it as we go up. Let's make it one more time. I'm just going to go ahead and constrict the object size to the size of the cylinder. and then line it up properly. Okay, go ahead and duplicate the cylinder one last time and we're gonna make this a cone. Check the render and see what it looks like. That looks good. I'm just gonna go ahead and select all, control R to group it. So now I can drag it up as one object and I'm gonna give it some height. I'm going to replicate the missile taking off. Let's see, let's go ahead and make some fins for the missile. This one object will serve as the reference for all the fins I'll be making. Okay, now that that's done, we can go ahead and create the smoke effects for this missile, which is going to be a lot of fun. Go ahead and go back to model mode, create a new object, and we're going to make this fairly large because smoke tends to travel outwards. And we go to the size of 128, lower it accordingly, right below the missile, and then go into the object. Select this for voxel shader mode, go over to the shaders tab, and scroll down until you see mandel bulb, mandel bulb or whatever it's called, attach, actually you can just hit play right here next to shader, or you can adjust the size of however you want it, but I'm just going to click on this play button, and then I'm going to flip it around, in Z axis, so invert it, and um, just give it a little bit of, let's erase some bits here and there. And then just attach some randomly. I'm literally just mind lemonly erasing and attaching stuff. No form of this whatsoever, all randomness, but controlled randomness. Just don't want to overdo it. Okay, looks good. Let's go ahead and actually make this slightly larger on the Z axis. So in scale, you type Z, make it maybe at 1.25, adjust it a bit, and actually on the X and Y. Maybe adjust the scale as well. Like that. Constrict it to the object and then try to align it to the missile. Like 
like so. Go ahead and take a look. Looks like it's off center a little bit, so let's adjust it. Okay, now here's the fun bit. We're gonna basically duplicate this a bajillion times to have the smoke go to the floor and then it's spread out. Let's go ahead and make a new object. And I'm using the plus and minus keys in the world edit to move, to, to rotate the, uh, the objects here while duplicating. And for some of these, you just want to play with the settings a little bit just to make sure they have some differences between all of them. All right, now that you're happy with the smoke effects, let's go ahead and check the render mode and what it looks like. You're gonna see in render mode, the actual render is nothing like the mono mode. And that's because when you go to render, have it all selected, and the all tab, have the all tab selected, and then go down until you see geometry sparse. You wanna have that checked marked or filled in. Now you can see we have the smoke effects here. Now, we're going to be messing with the Matters tab to actually make this look like smoke. So let's do that right now. Click to Model, and pick a slot that you're going to remember and give it a smoke color. I think that color looks good. And then for each object, you want to just want to go to Paint and have Region Replace selected. And make sure this color is selected and just click on it. and. Just do this for all the other objects. Okay, now back into the renders tab. I'm just gonna go ahead and I wanna save this camera angle. So I'm gonna hit seven on my keyboard. And so now if I move the camera around like here and I wanna get back to the camera position I saved it at, press eight on the keyboard and it'll bring me back here. So, Let's say this color wasn't selected and it was right here. To select this uh, color to be manipulated in the Matters tab, press and hold Alt and left mouse click the um, object that you want to make them matter. So you can see that the color palette selected and then you can go to Cloud and then let's see, Scatter. Now you can see it's getting some form. You want to make sure you have this this and this selected. So you can see now it's even more looking like a cloud. And you just want to play with these settings to your liking. Okay, now we're going to create some explosion effects for the missile here. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to model select on the cloud or smoke closest to the missile, in this case it's from this here. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it and drag it out. Go into the object, whoops, and we're going to delete it. Create a new mandible bulb shader and then flip it. And then ignore the color right now, this is going to look different for you because I created this palette here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and press and hold alt left click on the object and then we are going to randomize it and by basically what this does is going to delete voxels here and there We just want to make it small enough where 
it's not entirely dense but dense enough where it'll emit enough color because we're going to give this an emission shader and if it was just like this it would be way too bright so now that you have the correct number of particles you want to emit go ahead and create a palette for the explosion usually the explosions range from a light yellow color to a red color so in order to create a palette go ahead and select an empty voxel um, color and then give it a give it one color on one side of the gradient and then um, another color on the other side and then you go to press and hold control alt and left mouse click drag and then you have your gradient let's go ahead and color this in Okay, now that that's done, go ahead and constrict it and then drag it back where this cloud was. Like so. Move it up a little bit. And then go ahead and go to the camera angle. We saved that earlier. Go to render and give this an emission shader. Let's go and have that one selected. I usually go all the way to the emission 100 and give the power 2. I'm going to do this for all the colors on the gradient. Okay, right now it's looking pretty good, but the explosion seems to stop right here, so we're going to make the explosion go down even more. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new object. For a new object, make sure you know where it is, drag it out. Make it larger than the one before, put a mandel bulb. Create the shader, flip it, use the random shader to get rid of the extra voxels we don't need. I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, and then like the other one, do this, the same method that we did earlier, so by just by coloring it in. Okay, so for any of these gray voxels that you weren't able to fill in, go just go ahead and alt left click on it and then actually have the region select tool uh, selected and just click on the gray blocks or just like all of them and just hit delete. Like it gets rid of the all uncolored voxels. Constrict it and let's move it back into the scene. Go back to our saved camera position. All right, this is looking pretty good. So, in order to give it that final touch, let's go ahead and make a new object. Select the brightest um, color on the gradient for the explosion. Create cylinder, erase it till you have maybe just two or one voxels, constrict it, and drag it back to the missile and put it, place it right under the missile. It's important that this, um, I guess this circle here is the same size as the uh, base of the missile, just to make it look like it's... Um, just to make them look more realistic, because if it was really small and you put it right under the missile, it doesn't look that good. So make sure this 
is the same um, size as the base of the missile. Go ahead and just drag it up, just right under the missile, like right there. Go back to save the camera position. And then maybe, now that that's done, go ahead and duplicate it. Drag it out, make this larger. And we're gonna make this slowly dissipate in size. Drag it down. Have box select selected. Let's maybe select that. Then, oops. And then get the random shader out. Like so, and then drag it back under the missile. Bring it out. Maybe make this, maybe make it slightly like that. Okay, and there you go. You have a you have smoke effects and an explosion from a missile being launched into space or whatever. You can go ahead and adjust the smoke, and let's go ahead and play with the lighting settings. Let's say I'm finished with this and I want to upload this. And right now you can see the render times are significantly slowed down. That's because we have these activated. If you want just to see what it looks like when you're progressing, you can turn these off. It doesn't really affect it too much, but it significantly improves your render times. And really, you just want to have these three on MS GGX, MS MIS Cloud, and TR Shadow. You just want to have those three on when you're ready with the final product because if you have those on it will just take too long to render After that's finished rendering, you can see that we have this missile launching into space with this cool explosion and smoke effect. And maybe in your first few tries, it might take you a while, but after, it's this honestly takes you about 10 to 15 minutes. And it looks pretty good for what it is. Um, there's probably a bunch of different ways you can recreate something like this, but this is just my method of doing it. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. It looks the part. So I hope this helps you guys. Take care. See you in the next video.